بأنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا نأوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدي أنهم سبلنا الحمد لله it's an honor to be in a beautiful company of beautiful people in Cape Town may Allah bless you all may Allah preserve you may Allah increase you I was visiting your first masjid in Cape Town and visiting the legacy of the scholars and the teachers in their sacrifice that in the middle of the difficulty and the middle of being alone they became the source of light they became in the middle of darkness they became a source of light how do you do that how do you do that how do you become light when there is darkness all around you how do you become a healing when you yourself is in pain My brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in Gaza, in Palestine, how are they becoming this light that we see dozens of people entering the masjids in America, in Australia, and all over the world and accepting Islam just by listening and seeing their stories? How are we becoming, what is that formula that takes our submission, our Islam, to Iman, to faith, and then to ihsan, to beauty. Such beauty that stays beyond yourself and transforms the people around you. How do you get from submission to beauty and excellence? Especially when the odds are against you. When you don't have control over a lot of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is the one Allah is with those in Allah ma'al ladina taqaw wal ladina humul muhsinun Allah is with those who are mindful of Allah Allah is with those who are mindful of Allah and Allah is with those who strive for that beauty and that excellence What does mindfulness mean? That in the street definition, mindfulness is not getting carried away. Mindfulness is our ability to train our brain to stay focused and stay present. Mindfulness is our ability to regulate and control our mind. Mindfulness is our ability to be strong in our mind. Like the Prophet said, that the strongest person is not someone that wrestles and beats the other person but the person who is able to regulate their emotion and their anger and, and control their emotion. And the person who has the ability to take revenge and has the power to take revenge when they're angry or upset, and they control and regulate that emotion because they have control and regulation on their mind, the Prophet said, Allah will give them the taste of iman. Allah will give them the taste of faith. You know why? Because Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tiqlal ittaqillah Be mindful of Allah and qulu qawlan sadida And then speak the truth Speak the plain, the clean, the, the plain truth And the scholars and the mufassirun they mention to us That why did Allah Before saying that speak the truth Allah could have gotten to the command right away and said that Just speak the plain truth But before that why did Allah stop and say Be mindful of Allah be conscious, be aware of Allah. Why was that mindfulness brought, the consciousness and awareness brought before we are told to speak the truth? Because our scholars say that if we're not mindful of Allah, if we're not mindful, if we're not aware, if we're not conscious, we will not be able to speak the truth. Because we're going to be distracted, we're going to be tempted, we're going to be influenced by something other than our true self. And whenever we lie, my brothers and sisters, we lie to our own selves. Whenever we lie, we do not see the truth of our own selves. Whenever we lie and we get distracted, we forget that who we were in the presence of when Allah said, Alastu bi rabbikum? Am I not your Lord? And we witness through our souls that qalu bala, yes, you are our Rabb. Our souls know, our hearts know. 
So when we get away from the consciousness and awareness and the mindfulness of God, we get, we get away from awareness and we start living our life on distraction, living our life on autopilot, living our life just getting carried away. We forget who we are and we forget who our Allah is. How do you take that submission to faith, to ihsan and the beauty and excellence? That Yusuf, a young boy who was thrown into the well, alone in that darkness, how did Yusuf in the middle of all that darkness, that his own brothers, and if, I mean we find darkness when, you know, <laughs> when a family member is rude to us, or cuts us off, or doesn't give us something, or doesn't share something, or say something offensive. And here, you have your brothers, your own brothers, they're trying, they're making a plot to kill you. And a young boy thrown into the well in the middle of that darkness, sold as a slave, tempted by temptations and distractions, thrown into the prison. How did this person who was in the middle of all that darkness became the source of light. How? How did Yusuf, when he came out, he said, certainly my Rabb, he's Latif. He's so gentle, he's so subtle. He said, my Rabb is Latif. My Rabb is gentle. To us, was what he went through, was that gentle? What happens, my brothers, is that in the middle of that pain, in the middle of that distraction, in the middle of that suffering, when we come back to Allah, we heal ourselves with light that is not our own. That is not our own. In the Western world, you know, in America, the mindfulness science is very big because people are training how to control anxiety and depression and sadness and distraction with a healthy focus, calm mind, with cognitive behavioral therapy, with mindfulness, with meditation. They're training all of these different things that we as Muslims have had in our tradition for thousands of years. We have forgotten to meditate and focus on the names of Allah. We've forgotten to be silent like Jabir radiallahu anhu mentions that the Prophet was sitting in, the, in silence for long periods of time, you know, in awareness of Allah. We forgot to train our mind to be focused. We forgot to train our mind to be the minds of those who are connected to the light of Allah. When we, in the middle of difficulty, in the middle of distraction, in the middle of pain and suffering, when we turn back and come back to Allah, then we start building this channel, this communication. You know what they found in neuroscience? They found that when we get overwhelmed with emotion, the emotional center of the brain activates. There is a part of the emotional center of the brain, it's called the amygdala. And when it flares up, it's, it gets you into a fight, flight or freeze response. You're not thinking rationally anymore. Like that little child, you know, that's throwing a tantrum fighting the parents, I'm not going to wear these clothes, I'm not going to eat this food, right? And the parents try to force them, like, no, you've got to do this. So when that inner child activates in our mind, we all have that inner child. We all have that inner child. When that activates and the emotional center of the brain takes over, then you know what happens? The communication highways between the emotional center of the brain and the rational center of the brain that highway gets cut off. That communication gets cut off. And you know the rational part of the brain that makes us human, gives us executive thinking, executive functioning, makes us different than animals. The part of the brain that's right behind our forehead with which we make sujood. The aql of the human beings that we know as Muslims that's connected to our heart and our soul. And that rational part of the brain, how do we open up that communication highway? How do you open up the blocks, the obstacles in that path to be able to communicate, make connection to the two parts of the brain? 
And the scientists, they found that taking a few deep breaths, coming back to awareness, practicing silence, naming what you're feeling in your thoughts, it starts to overcome and regulate your emotional center of the brain and opens up the channels for the rational part of the brain. Awareness, consciousness, breathing, focus in the present moment. You know, a child, sometimes you, they're, they're not feeling very well. You know, they're stressed out and you give them like a crayon and a pencil and a paper and they start writing. And they start drawing. And all of a sudden you see them calming down. Because they are grounding themselves in that moment with that activity. He taught us through the pen. Allah's first word, Iqra, read. Can you read while being distracted? It's very difficult to read while being distracted. It's very difficult to write from your heart while being distracted. Reading and writing are forms of meditation. Contemplation, the ulama, they were in the dhikr of Allah through their reading and through their writing. My brothers and sisters, the prophetic mindfulness is to reclaim the connection we had, the power we had in the prophetic practices that made us people of presence and people of the present moment. We were not people that were overly concerned about what happened in the past. We're not people that got stuck about worries and anxieties of the future. We were people that maximize what we have in the present moment. Because we live in the past and we live in the future so much, we forget to maximize our present. The Prophet ﷺ was asked by Jibreel ﷺ, what is Islam? What is submission? What is Iman? What is faith? And what is Ihsan? What is that beauty and excellence of faith? The highest level. And the Prophet said, An ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara. The worship God as if you are in the presence of God. As if you can see Him. And if you cannot see Him, know that you are in His presence. He sees you. That presence of God heals us. That presence of Allah, being in the presence of Allah heals us. The Prophet ﷺ taught us how to regulate our brain, how to regulate our heart by coming back to the present and letting go of the past, letting go of the future. Not just in terms of that awareness and presence, but also in terms of the cognitive frame. What is the cognitive thought of your brain? That when you say, my Rabb, Latif, gentle and subtle, he is with me. The Prophet said, Allah deals with his servant according to his expectation of him. That Yusuf has this beautiful cognitive frame to refer to his God after going through all the pain he has gone through as a Latif. And the Prophet said, the person was tested the most remembering Allah by his beautiful names and expecting through his beautiful names. Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum. Whenever the Prophet would be dis distressed in difficulty, he would say, Oh, ever living, ever sustaining. Bi rahmatika nastaghiz, astaghiz. In your, in your rahma, in your mercy, I seek refuge and shelter. How does it feel to be in the refuge and the shelter of God? Inni rahmati wasiyat kulla shay that my rahma and my mercy surrounds all things. That I am always in the rahma of Allah. I am always in the mercy of my my my, my Allah. When a Muslim says, My my Lord Rahman and Rahim has done this to me, how could it be for for something bad? How could it be for harm? My Rabb doesn't do anything that harms. My Rabb is as salam the one who is the source of all peace, the source of all benefit, the source of all safety and security, and the one who is the absence of all evil. My Rabb does not do anything that is evil. Everything that he does is for my benefit. 
And the Prophet ﷺ smiled because he believed this. He was in deep presence of God, in his deep submission to God, deep contentment of God, that he was able to heal his sufferings. The Prophet ﷺ, he smiled when he said, how wondrous are the affairs of the believers. And he smiled to the point that the Sahaba mentions that we could see the teeth of the Prophet ﷺ was visible. And he said, whatever, whatever happens to a believer is khair, is good. And why did he smile? He knows that what happened to him Burying his own kids one after the other alive. You know, he buried them while he was alive. Losing his most beloved people. And why, how, the same person is the person who smiled the most. The person who was healed the most. The person who has such healing presence that if you came to the Prophet and if you sat in front of the Prophet Wasallam, the way he listened, the way he embraced you, the way he smiled, he never let go of his hand until you let go of his hand. Amr ibn As radiallahu mentions that he used to embrace the worst of us. Not the best of us, the worst of us. He used to embrace the worst of us until our hearts would soften. How is this person doing this? Doesn't he have pain of his own? Hasn't he seen darkness? But all of those darkness turns into light when you come in the presence of Allah. That in the middle of their prison, you know, those scholars and their ulama, they're able to come to the connection, come to that, build a relationship with God and heal. And Allah would give them that light. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ You are not, you don't have this beauty in you, O Prophet, except through the mercy that God gives you. God gave them that ability in the middle of that prison to write that Quran and that tawfiq that they became the pathways of light for this community, for South Africa. And this is the examples of everyone that can come from submission to beauty by the presence of God. By bringing their mind and training their mind to not get distracted. Why did this happen to me? Why? They didn't ask why. They asked Allah, what do you want me to do now? How can I be in the presence of Allah now? Who am I and what's my identity? What can I do in this? Who did Allah send me here for? That I am the Khalifa of Allah and I'm the representative of God. I am the Naib, I'm the messenger of the messenger. I am the waris, I inherited the Quran. This is who I am no matter where I am. And what does Allah want from me now? This presence of God, this purpose in your heart, this showing up for what Allah wants from me now, this builds that beauty and ihsan. This builds the spiritual presence, letting go of the past, what might have happened, letting go of the future, and claiming the, the current moment. Claiming the present moment, letting go of what you don't have control over, but claiming what you do have control over. That is mindfulness. That is mindfulness. And who can teach us about mindfulness better than our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who can teach us? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had such concern for his ummah that the Sahaba mentions that sometimes when he would be crying for his ummah in the middle of the night, the sound that used to come out of his chest used to be like the water in a boiling kettle. The sound of the heart, the chest of the Prophet would sound like a boiling kettle because he was crying so much. He was so concerned for his ummah to the point that Allah had to tell him, console him in the Quran and say, are you going to kill yourself? Are you going to kill yourself? This is how much concern he had. How did this person get up in the morning and smiled and hugged and became a source of healing for his family when he got there? Became so deeply spiritually intelligent. The prophetic intelligence is not just emotional intelligence, it's spiritual intelligence because it's God-centered. 
When you have God-centered mindfulness and emotional intelligence, you're spiritually intelligent because Allah is with you. You don't do anything for anyone because it is you that you're trying to prove, but it is because you are in the presence of Allah. What do you think about the two, that the third is God? What do you think about the three, that the fourth is Allah? What do you think about the five, that the sixth is God? So wherever you are, wherever you are, God is with you. Ittaqullah, be mindful of God, wherever, wherever you are. So when you lose that akhlaq with your wife, with your children, when you lose that behavior and the character with your family, when you lose that best self at home in private, you forgot that same Allah that was with you outside is also with you inside. You forgot that Allah deserves even more from you when you're in private because that shows your ikhlas. How did the Prophet who went through so much suffering become a source of light and source of healing for everyone, not just himself? And this is my brothers, we know this. This is a light bulb moment in my training when I was going through my certifications and my training in mindfulness, emotional intelligence. We studied this monk. This monk, Matthew Ricard, spent years in the monastery meditating, cultivating his mind, regulating his mind. When he came out, he was the son of a very famous scientist and all of these people they were like okay Matthew is back we've got to study his his brain because they were doing this neuroimaging center and they wanted to put a functional MRI scan on his brain and they had a control group and they exposed all these difficult images and violent difficult images and and graphics that would pain people to see them war and bloodshed and difficult things that when you see them the pain region of the brain would light up and people would get distressed by seeing these things and they're measuring people's reaction in the brain and then they studied the brain of Matthew when they exposed him to those same things and while all the other people's brain were lighting up the pain regions of the brain were lighting up was reacting was activating Matthew's brain was calm and relaxed so the scientists, they asked him, what are you doing differently? What are you doing differently? He said that for years I learned how to meditate and how to control my mind. So I was doing compassion meditation. I was holding all those pain in compassion. And that was the light bulb moment for me as a Muslim. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً who else embodies compassion like the one who was sent as compassion for the world? That the Prophet ﷺ was able to heal in the compassion of Allah, in the rahmah of Allah, and he was able to embody that compassion for people. When you get distressed by seeing those images coming out of Palestine, coming out of any place that people are oppressed, Remembering, remembering, of course we turn our pain into, into purpose. We turn our anger into positive, productive action. But also, remember the cognitive frame of the mind of the Prophet ﷺ. Bring and ask refuge in the mercy and compassion. and Hold those compassions. Say, Allah, fill their heart with compassion. Surround them with compassion. Make it like the fire of Ibrahim. In the middle of that fire, you gave him peace. In the middle of that fire, you gave him compassion and rahmah and mercy. Allah, surround them, fill them. This is how the Prophet ﷺ was able to turn his pain into beauty. This is how we're able to go from submission to faith to excellence. My brothers and sisters, this doesn't come without putting in the effort. I want to end by saying, Put in some time on yourself to learn these things. Make these connections. Practice these things. You need regular practice of how to think, how to practice this prophetic compassion, prophetic meditation, prophetic muraqaba, prophetic dhikr, prophetic fikr. These are ways that our, we can revive our prophetic sunnahs 
to train our mind and train our heart. So wherever we go, we show up with our best self as a leader, as a parent, as a teacher, in every role that we perform. We perform not just with submission, but take it to the level of beauty and excellence. We are here, the beautiful organization Warriors of Hope, that is trying to pave that, becoming, becoming a pioneer in the Muslim mental health, providing that service for families that went through grief and loss, starting to expand their service in mental health for our community. And, mashallah, beautiful organizations have come together to support Light Upon Light, Medina Institute, Islamic Relief, supporting the programs that we'll be doing. Tonight, we have a benefit dinner. How can we pave the pathway for mental health for Muslims in Cape Town and South Africa in a way that reclaims our tradition and the prophetic tradition? And tomorrow, we have a workshop all day and Sunday, half day. So we invite you, inshallah, to come. And we invite you to invest first in yourself and then in your community because this is how you lift people up this is how you lift people up do you know how much potential this ummah is losing because of mental health anxiety and depression are the number one cause of disability around the world it's not your paralysis it's not the physical things it's the mental challenges that people are feeling that is completely leaving them handicapped so much potential is lost in our marriages, in our parenting, in our productivity. As an ummah, we need to bring back that productivity. We need to bring back that potential. We need to invest. Can you be emotionally well? Can you be spiritually well if you're not emotionally well? Can you reach your spiritual potential if you don't reach your emotional potential? How can we do it in a prophetic way? We need to have research, we need to have data, just like others are doing research on meditation, we need to have research on dhikr and fikr and muraqabah and the prophetic practices. And alhamdulillah, those research are starting to come out. Those research are starting to come out. And we are trying to have you know, psychologists and mental health counselors and trainers and educators around the world trying to make an impact on how to revive this God-centered prophetic excellence to reach our best spiritual potential our mental and emotional potential, and get to our best self in every way we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tools. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to continue to reclaim the beauty that we have in our deen, to be proud, to revive the prophetic ways, and to bring back the example of the person who is the best example for humanity. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah takbir. Allahu Akbar, Akbar walillahi alhamd. Shukran jazakallah khair and bait ramakasi to Al Ustad Wadud Hassan from America for a beautiful topic, the prophetic approach to mindfulness. Speaking to us with regard to the power of the God given mind. May Almighty Allah grant us understanding. Al Ustad Wadud Hassan is also a lead teacher on prophetic mindfulness. He's a motivational speaker. He conducts seminars throughout the world and workshops on the power of the mind. We thank Brother Nazir Parker and his wife, Ma'ali Mazinat, and the entire team of the Warriors of Hope for facilitating and bringing Al Ustad Wadud Hassan to South Africa. Welcome, Ustad. May you have a beautiful time here, and may Allah crown all your efforts with resounding success. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Just a few announcements. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank and welcome Ajab Rahman Peterson and his team of Radio 786 who are broadcasting this Jummah live on the airwaves of Radio 786. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you and bless you and cause Radio 786 to grow, inshallah, from strength to strength. Then we have been asked to make dua for Haji Aisha Bibi Pangakar, the mother of Haji Abbas Pangakar, uh, whose yachatel is today. May Almighty Allah grant an all disease Jannatul Firdaus. And also, on Sunday we had the janaza of Haji Umar Najjar. He was the last son of Sheikh Naid Najjar and also the youngest brother of the late Sheikh Abu Bakr Najjar, Rahmatullahi Alayhim Ajma'in. 
and his janaza was Sunday, and he was aged 94. He used to attend the Juma'a regularly, even till his very last year at Masjid Al-Quds. May Almighty Allah grant him and all our deceased Jannah to Firdaus, and make their kuburs from the gardens of Jannah. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. And then a few people have asked to make dua for Shifa, for Abin Dalvi, who had an operation, Haji, uh, Haji Zubaida Hidayatullah Firfri, and also Dua Shifa for Hawa Bibi Ahmad Tembe, who is very ill from Craven B, and Dua Shifa for Auntie Nadima Phillips, who had an operation. May Allah grant all our sick people at home and in hospital Shifa and Kamila. Amen. And uh, to end uh, with a high note, we have a brother here, his name is Steve Chayaluka. I would like to come to the front. We have already explained to him what Islam is. He just want to make everyone witness. Please come with him as support. He just want to say the Kalima Shahada to make everyone witness that indeed Allah is opening the gates of heaven and sending down his divine rahmah, mercy and forgiveness. And may we all benefit from that. Amen. Brother Steve Chayaluka. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Ar-Rahim, La, Ila, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illallah, Illaha, Muhammadu, Muhammadu, Rasulullah, Allah Sallallah, 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 Alayhi, Alayhi, Wasallam, Masallam. I bear witness, I bear witness, that there is, that there is, only one Allah, the only one Allah, and I bear witness, I be witness that I believe, I believe in all the prophets, in all the prophets and, the prophet Muhammad, and the prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is the last, is the last, the final, the final, and the true prophet, and the true prophet of Allah. Of Allah. I accept. I accept Islam, Islam as my deen, as my deen and, all Muslims, and all Muslims as my brothers, as my brothers and, my sisters. and my sisters. I am a Muslim, I am Muslim and, I choose the name, and I choose the name Suleiman. MashaAllah. Takbir. May Allah grant him from the wisdom of Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. Shukran. You are now Muslim. Barakallahu feek. And last but not least, our Arabic khutbah will be done and read by Hafiz Ali Pankakar, and the salah will be read by Maulana Rafi Gaibi, inshallah, who has also just recently come back from Umrah. So all the people are back from Umrah. Umrah Magbula, Wadamba Magfura, Amin Ya Rabbal Alamin. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Bayat Ramakasi. Uh, before the Mu'adhin Kifadan, can I just request everyone to very quickly just stand up, step forward. Wherever you see a space in front of you, that space is rightfully yours. Can I have everyone's cooperation, please, as well as my mothers and sisters upstairs also. Don't let there be any gaps. We make the safs now ready, so the Imam come from the mimba. we start the Salah immediately. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Paya Paya Tramakasi. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu an la ilaha illa أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Hayyan 
إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمسلكين رب اختم لنا بالحير برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي يسبح له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة تنجي قائلها من عذاب أليم وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله حبيب الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقرآن العظيم ونفعنا بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك فر رؤوف الرحيم وتوانم ودفت الوبارك زلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وعشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ذاتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداءك عداء الدين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا في كل مكان يا مولانا يا رب العالمين اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في فلسطين وفي كل مكان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا الجنة مع البرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباخ يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقم الصلاة We will also bring the Kulut Nazila in the second rakaat asking Allah's divine assistance for the people of Gaza. Amen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Hayala al-Salat, Hayala al-Falah, Qad qamati salat, Qad qamati salat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, La ilaha illa Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Istaqimu, Allahu Akbar Allahu 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عفيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت 
فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد على ما قضيت فلك الحمد على ما قضيت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اليهود أعداك أعداء الدين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان خاصة في غزة وخاصة في فلسطين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا فاغفر لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم استغفر الله العظيم والتواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيم ونتوب إليك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة ويداية لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت هذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين